We can live forever. We can live forever. We can live. Oh, yeah. 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 So let me live my way. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another edition of episode of Roz's Happy Hour. Um, did you check us out last week? Oh my God, we had Pam the Satris. Um, she's an amazing creative artist and a painting artist as well. We had so much fun. Um, we had a surprise guest for with us. Uh, Ziggy Marley's background singer, Tracy, joined us. And then we had another surprise. Lavelle Degree of the Whispers joined us. Uh, we just had a great time. So thank you for being with us today. Um, we're our, this is our eighth episode. So we're so excited that you joined us. Um, you know, Please go check us out on YouTube, subscribe to our station, and uh, check out those last seven episodes. But I'm so happy today, today we have with us in the house, oh my God, none other than the king himself, King Narda, Michael Walden. Hold on one second, check it out. Let me... Narda, Michael, right. Walden. Hey. Hey. How are you? Yeah. I'm wonderful. Welcome to Wednesday's happy hour. How have you been? Yes, we've been very happy to be here. Happy Thank to be alive. You. Happy yes. to be grateful. Happy to be uh, healthy. Yeah. And saying prayers for all the people around the planet that we come together. Stay healthy. And, and racism. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Oh yeah. Well, well, I just want to jump in and let the people know that I mean, producer of the year, over 50 number one hits, writer, producer, arranger, artist. Come on now. <laughs> I am blessed to have you with me today. <laughs> I'm blessed to have you on my life. I've known you for a long time now, you long and your husband, time. and yes. thank you for uh, having me on your show. Thank and you. And let's just here. have some fun. Let's have some fun. Yes. Oh, look at what I got. This was. These are when you came, nineteen ninety nine, mm. and I still have. Oh my Can you see? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Those are hot. These are hot. The hot Thank drumsticks. you. <laughs> hot drumsticks. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, and thank you for the Christmas cards. Oh, Every man. year we look oh. forward to our night. If I don't get a card from you, I'm like, oh my God, I, did I not make the list? So <laughs> you're one of the nicest artists that I know. I mean, thank you're you. from the heart. Um and I think that's why you've been so successful because you put your heart into everything that you do. I mean, you know, tell the folks about, um, I think you started with Stacy Ladisaw. As a producer, as a pop producer, Stacy was my first, Stacy Ladisaw was the first pop R&B singer that I was able to work with, courtesy of Henry oh. Allen at Cotillion Records. Henry was the president of Cotillion Records, which was a subsidiary of Atlantic Records. Yeah. And I knew that Henry was looking for a sound for Stacy. She was 11 years old. He was looking oh. for a sound for her to break her out in the world. So I was hot with a song called I Should Loved You uh, off Dance Life album, Tonight I'm All Right, you know, some of my hits. And I said to Henry, let me, let me produce four, four tracks. And if you like them, then I'll produce the, the rest of the album, another four and you'll be done. 
If you don't like me, I haven't lost that much. So he said, okay. So I came back to San Francisco here, got with my band. It was Carl Ruschi on guitar, Frank Martin on keyboards, TM Stevens on bass. And we wow. rehearsed. I wrote Living Your Angel, Dynamite, oh. Jump to the Beat, and My Love. And we cut them in Sausalito at the record plant. And then I flew to where Stacey was in Washington and had her sing the songs. And we mixed them. And they were done so fast that Cotillion Henry was like, wow, we're under budget. It's done quickly. And it's smashing. So, and we, God bless us, we had hits. So because of that with Stacey, then the doors start opening. Everybody starts calling. And then once I starts calling, you're, you're, you're hot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then you went to Aretha <laughs> Frank. Oh, no, you did Dionne Warwick? After that, uh, well, if you want to know chronological, there's a lot of stuff. Well, there. I know. Well, Sister, yeah. Sister Sledge came along with All American Girls, <laughs> and the Bowfield came along with Too Tough, and, oh, and a lot, a lot of music for the Angela. Three albums of the Angela Bowfield. Oh, Phyllis Hyman wow. came along with, oh. Ride, you know, Gods of Love and Ride the Tiger and Wipe Me On. Oh God! And then Johnny Gill with Stacey, a perfect combination with Preston Glass helping to compose. Wow. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of history. A lot of history. I mean, a lot of history. I know I've had JT Taylor on, the, and he talks about Narda. Um, everyone talks about Narda. This come through this music thing. <laughs> Basically, JT was very beautiful. Um, he's a handsome man with a with a really regal and royal voice. You can feel his royalty in his blood, mm. and he sang a song with Regina Bell called "Forever." Yes, the soundtrack yes. for one of the movies we were doing. And he was just so lovey, so loving, lovey, that you can feel it when you listen to that record. Yeah. And then, of course, Regina Bell's genius. Oh, yeah. So you put those two together, and it was like, just for me, I'm in the, the best seat in the house. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. how I feel about it. I'm in the best seat in the house. Yeah, because you just love music. I mean. I love music, and I love the idea of being able to be a helper for the artists, whatever they need, tea, coffee, a candle, a teddy bear, flowers. A neck rub, you know, because it's very daunting to be behind a microphone. People don't realize how nerve wracking it can be even for the queen of soul. You know, she needs to be like relaxed to do her very best. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you want to record something that's going to last a hundred years or more. Yes. So. Listen, um, just sitting here with you being behind the scenes is nerve wracking. <laughs> so I can't even imagine trying to sing. <laughs> What does Tarpon Studio mean? I mean, you've been in, the, you've had that studio. I mean, that's where all of the great sounds have come out of, correct? We came here in 85 and mm -hmm. my guru, Shri Chin Moy, gave us his name Tarpan. He says that Tarpan means satisfaction unparalleled. He said, every heart, every soul, every person that comes to Tarpan will have satisfaction unparalleled. Wow. Ooh. Ooh, that's okay. deep. Okay. <laughs> so he's given us a lot to live up to. And yes. we try. We keep yes. our place very clean. That's that that's that's the thing we're gonna talk about, but it's like clean. It is immaculate. You gotta have that. And then, then the spirit knows, oh, it's clean, cans are going. Oh, you want nice music? Okay. Yes. Kind of like yes. that. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, as is immediately what I felt coming to the studio was it just it was a presence, it was Again, immaculate, the candles, there was some red, just peace, calm. Yeah. So, um, wow, I, I feel fortunate. And you Bay Area. Yes, yes, I am. I was raised in Michigan, Kalamazoo, Michigan. This is my last one from. And then I came to Los Angeles, you know, with a band trying to make it when I was like about 18, 19, you know, then I went down to Florida and tried to make it down there with a, a fusion jazz rock band as a drummer called the New McGuire Sisters. And then down there, I met so many aspiring young musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Pat Metheny was down there. Mm -hmm. Hiram Bullock was down there. Patty Scalpel, who's been, then, then Mary Bruce Springsteen was down there. Wow. And so many, Jaco Pastorius was down there. Everybody was down in Florida. Then the band I was with decided to go to Connecticut. We went to Connecticut. And up in Connecticut, I met John McLaughlin, Bobby Schmidt. And then I said, I want to be like you. He said, okay, then pray and meditate. I said, okay, I will. And then he took me into his band about a year later. There I am being a busboy in a restaurant, going from a busboy and, 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 and struggling to now joining the Mahavishnu Orchestra. And then that band took me to the Beatles producer in 1974 wow. with, a, you know, with the album called Apocalypse. And then mm -hmm. around the world touring. And then you open your eyes to a bigger world. 
and then comes on more fusionary music of Jeff Beck, Weather Report, all kind of stuff. Then I decide I want to break out as a producer, and then Stacy, and then all that music starts happening, and then Aretha, and Whitney Houston, and so much of it starts happening. Yeah, but it's, but it, really at, at the at the bottom of it is 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 God's grace. Yeah, God's God's working for us if we if we wanted to. Okay. Even, if we, even, if we, even if we don't want it to, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> All right, preacher. See, that's what people forget. You know, yeah. it is about, it is yeah. spiritual. Mm -hmm. It is connecting with the universe and being yeah. grateful. Yeah. And then, because it, it's about who you know. Yeah. As well as you had a, some skills and opportunity. And, you know, that's what, um, you know, we, we have to tell the young artists coming up now, you know, stay at it. You know, connect with the universe. You know, and every step is a stepping stone. Right. And pay attention to the course of a song because the mm -hmm. course of a song can save you. Uh, you can have a great verse, great bridge, great everything, but if the course is not strong, if you can't remember the course, if you can't imagine everybody singing the chorus, if you can't imagine being on a stage and asking everyone to sing along and they can't really do it, something's wrong. Fix your course. That's a, that's like the punchline of a joke. You gotta have a, you gotta have you gotta have a strong punchline, right? Yeah. Ask Dave, ask Dave Chappelle. Ask any great comedian. You gotta have a punchline. So same in music. A strong chorus can save your career. Wow. A strong chorus. So always focus to make sure you got something that people can like really feel in their heart. Either either want to sing along with or embrace. Oh, that's my song. Oh, you sing that song. Oh, I love that song. That has to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. But is is it the music has changed so much right now that they forget about? I'm not hearing any chorus or anything that I go back to the music you created. That's you know those songs were meaningful. You could put your heart in, and when you sing, your soul. I can't follow today's music. Do you think mm. that we'll get back to strong lyrics? I think it's happening right now. I think there is good mm. music in the world, but it's getting a, it has a harder time to see daylight in other words we're clogging everything with the uh, social medias there's so much music coming out um but it's it's like so much stuff but there is good stuff in the world I, i'm always learning by what i'm hearing and, mm -hmm. and encouraged by what i'm hearing mm -hmm. uh there's a girl right now named named dojo cat i like her sound so mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff i'm, I'm hearing i'm very encouraged by mm -hmm. so yeah it, it's it's happening it's happening well um i read a quote Okay. from Quincy about you. He says, uh, you're, wait a minute, uh, Narda is like cloth on the melody. Make it stand up tall. <laughs> Your music mm -hmm. is like cloth. Mm -hmm. You make it stand up tall. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Quincy Jones is my mentor. He was the one that said to me, we need more helpers in production. Artists need more helpers. You would be a good producer. So I took production more seriously when I heard him tell me that. I, I, I felt it already because I watched George Martin. I watched Tom Dowd. I watched the guys I worked with, Ken Scott, Dennis McKay, John McLaughlin. But then when Quincy told me that, I kind of took a step more serious. So, because yeah. I, I really admired him. I mean, I do admire him. He's like a fount of knowledge, wisdom, and... Uh, he knows how to be a great musician at the same time merge to the people. And that's mm -hmm. what I think a production, a producer's role is, how to connect an artist with the people, you know, on the masses. He took Michael Jackson, who was a great artist, but helped Michael really connect to the millions. Oh, yeah. To the millions. Yes. So, you know, when I was with Whitney Houston, with Aretha, or Mariah Carey. I'm really conscious. How can I help this artist connect to the millions? Mm -hmm. So as, as I'm meditating, as I'm praying, as I'm, I'm trying to feel in my in my little goosebumps, in my spirit, you know, the, the tingles of, oh yeah, people will love this, you know? So that's, it's important we put our emotions in there. Yeah. And I, have to think, and I have to thank Quincy Jones every day. Yeah, and I'm sorry, that quote was from from uh, Quincy Jones, not Clyde. No, but that's Clyde. Not, no, no, that's Quincy Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I call Quincy Jones Borda, which means older brother. He calls me Chorda, which means younger brother. And I, yeah, and I'm due for a visit. I've been thinking about him this morning, so I want to go see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got some, some wonderful parties. Um, Quincy was, was just the man. Let me um, show you something. Jimmy, go get that picture of me over down there. Well, let me show you. you can keep talking, but I want to show you something that's, that's so profound to show you how, how deep my friendship is with him. What's wow. Yeah. Uh, which picture? Yeah, the four of us. Uh, 
which right there that, that one right there. Roz, let me show you this okay let me come back up so i can see Oh wow, it's look at that. Right the young Narda, Narda Richard, Richard Pryor, Pryor, and Lionel. I love wow. this moment at Quincy's house. And Quincy was such an inspiration. We all wanted to be around him. To, to be able to be around him was a real gift, is a real gift. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And you know what? When you're thinking about somebody, you gotta call them. Yeah, that's right. You know, don't yeah. don't wait on that. Make mm -hmm. that call. Um, that'd yeah. be great. Did you know Little Richard? Did you work with Little Richard? No, but I was. I'm so in love with Little Richard. As a little yeah. boy, he's the first one that really ignited my heart. When I heard at a, my grandmother's house on a '78, uh, Long Tall Sally, and um, Tutti Fruity. Oh yeah. On '78, the sound was electrifying. Mm. You know what I mean? He could yeah. scream so blood curdling. Yeah. Everything was like right. Yes. Like, damn, who is this? Little Richard. So as a little, little boy, he like ignited me. So I'm a major Little Richard fan. I I saw him at one of the R&B awards I was at. I saw him do an interview, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I never had a chance to really produce him. Yeah. Now, and now he's gone to heaven. Yeah. But what he put down truly for me is the beginning of rock and roll. Yes. Everything I tried to emulate, that's that electricity. His yeah. bar was so high. Where he jumped to, everybody's trying to jump to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you play funk, R and B, pop. You could play anything. You're versatile. You you didn't get locked into one genre. So people in Michigan and the Midwest, all of us can play everything. Wow. You 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 learn to survive. If you want to be a musician, you have to play Cold Sweat by James Brown. You gotta be able to play Dave Dave Brubeck's take five. Uh, Cannibal Adley's music, country music, stuff that came out of London, uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders, the Stones, when the Beatles came out, Jimmy, you had to be aware of all that, Beatles, you had to be aware of everything. You couldn't just be like, it was stuck in one thing. Yeah. If you wanted to survive it, then you heard all the music and you learned to play all the music. Yeah. And, then, and then you had a chance to like, oh, you can jam with this band this night, you can jam with that band that night. That's how you became successful, you know, making a living. Wow. Yeah. So tell me this. So does a drum machine take place of real drums now, or are they going to the electric drums? If I'm understanding your, your question, the drum machine and the robot sound has been with us since the 80s and even, oh. even, even earlier. Oh. Prince, Prince perfected it. I perfected it. We all perfected it. And then what, I, what I've done from my own personal sound is I mix in with machines my sound or a live sound, live drums mixed with machines. It's that combination that makes it sound current because as things change, you want to change with it. Yes. So, yeah, machines have been here for a long time. Right now in the top 10, you hear a lot of machines. Yeah. A lot of machines. It's like very robot. Even the sound of autotune is popular. They want to have the autotune robot sound on the rap, on the singing. So... We like robots. Yes. We like robots. Yes. yes. Someone, someone, somebody likes robots. <laughs> and the yes. reason why I ask that is because, I mean, when I started in the business, I started managing a group locally. And I, I think I told this story last week, but I went, you know, we had a show and the one of the background singers didn't show up. So they told me to keep walking as the band was entering the stage and they ended up putting me at a drum machine and you know i am so tone deaf right i had such i was having such a good time i started turning it up and turning it up and turning it up and the drummer was like you're killing me oh i see it is headphones right yeah 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 i didn't yeah. know what i was doing i was yeah, like well, sounding good right. you know just <laughs> yeah, because, like, like my headphones right now see like, if, you know, I, you, if the sound was real loud, it would hurt me. So that's what happened to him. Uh, you were turning up the volume, feeling like you were get, getting your groove on, but it was going right in his ears. Yeah. yeah. yeah well. You know, that's what happens. Yeah. So listen, what else is going on with Narda these days? I'm raising children. I'm up a lot at night. Congratulations. I've got the, yeah, I got a, right. a six-year-old girl named Kelly who's a, a firecracker rocket ship, wants to go to Mars. 
Oh. Must, must be the first woman on Mars, and she probably will be. Then wow. you got a five year old named Kayla, and yeah. a, a little singer, a little actress doing her thing. Oh, then you got nice. I got a son named Michael, like one year, one and a half. I oh. love a lot of night with him, you know, he's just yeah. amazing. Oh, wow. Congratulations. And my wife's doing well, so thank you. So I'm raising, yeah. I'm raising babies at the same time, running my studio, joining a new band named Journey. Uh, they've been around for a long time, but they're brand new for me. So we're writing, writing new music in this quarantine. Just Neil, Sean, myself, and and the others like Jonathan Kane and Randy Jackson's back playing bass. So wow. we're kind of having fun with that. Then I'm also releasing solo albums. You you played that song when you first came on of mine. We can live forever. And yeah. uh, then I'm receiving a lot of gifts in the mail. I received this box set. Show me this music. Let me show you this is incredible. Uh, we're we're celebrating Whitney's first oh. album of oh. 35 year. 35 years it? compilation. And then you open it and it's beautiful with a lot of folks who remember her first album. And it's now a box set where you can buy it, enjoy all the all the writings of how the, the first album put together. And then for example, there's a great booklet, which I want to show you, I'm very proud of. Um, in this booklet, there are different people talking about her, you know which is a wonderful thing to read about people who love her and work with her hardcore. And let me see what we have here. Her books, her, her jackets, um, because she's doing You Give Good Love. He's in heaven now. Because she, wherever you are in heaven, we send you love for the hard work you did. Whitney loves you. Here she is, and how beautiful she was. And I remember when I first met her, how striking she was just to even look at her. Let alone she could sing like that. And when she sang, we're like, God, you're so confident. How did you get like that? Then I realized, of course, her mother, Sissy Houston, the most confident singer on the planet in New York City, doing all the backing sessions for Elvis Presley, Dion Warwick, Aretha Franklin. You know, so Sissy said, if you're going to be a singer, she told Whitney, I'm going to make you the best singer in the world. And she made her the best singer in the world. <laughs> I want to show you where I talk about her. Here it is. What do I say about her? I say, Wow. My song's called How Will I Know? I want to talk over here. Then. How Will I Know? You want to talk? Where's that page at, Kitty? Where's that page at? Give me one second. <laughs> wow. So can we purchase that? Yeah, you can buy it. It's out. It's out. It's out. It came out last week. Oh, here I talk about it. I say... Raw, pure, and God-loving, her angelic light and soul control is so deserving and eternal. And I speak about working with her in the studio, making the How I Know song. Mm. And it was just done so quickly. And I almost didn't do it because I was working on Aretha's Who's Who, Who Free Man Love album, which is also celebrating its 35 years right now too. So because I was so deep in Aretha land, I said no to Whitney with, with, with Whitney, but it was Jerry Griffith, that heiress that convinced me, said, no, take time for this. She's going to be huge. And you know, Whitney, that's Sissy's daughter. I said, mm. oh, right, right, right. So then I jumped on, we cut the song and I flew to New York and I met her and she sang it. And I, we brought her mother to sing backing for the saxophone with Russell Tubbs on there. Michael Barbera mixed it in New York and I was done. And I came back home. And years later, wow. it's, it's sold like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions. So wow. I'm so glad that the good Lord convinced me to do this project. And here we are, 35 yes. years later. And then, wow. you know, the second album of Whitney, she came here in this room. For I Want to Dance and He Loves Me. And wow. That whole album. So God bless us, you know. Yeah. So she she get it right in one take, huh? In the, well, in I would, we, we, on How Will I Know, she would sing it about three or four times, mm -hmm. but each take would be so devastating, you'd be knocked out. Wow. Then, then the challenge would be for me as a producer, any producer, is to how to comp her. Comp is how to put the best parts together. Because you mm -hmm. want to think like, what's going to live the longest life? What's going to be mm -hmm. like, you can listen to it over and over a hundred times and not get tired of it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was picking out the best, best parts, putting it together mm -hmm. seamlessly. Mm -hmm. Then that, that, that's the record. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was in it. Mariah Carey, man, you just killed on that. That's my girl. I she, love her vocals. 
just saw her in vegas oh okay yeah great 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 show so you also had um ascap award yeah we, we haven't opened it yet it just came this morning i can show you the box <laughs> but i have to open it maybe you can feel me opening it okay hold on i'll film it myself opening it for you because ascap says whenever i open it they will be me film myself yeah we're back this is the ascap award oh <gasps> oh my oh jimmy are you filming nice and i'll nice. open it right now yeah. oh my okay. god i'm gonna open this it says ascap awards let's see what it is it just came in the mail this morning Oh, how fortunate is that? I Here get to go. see. Come on, okay. Dada, come on, Dada. Yeah. Look, let me let you let the people see. Okay, yeah. let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what we got in here. Ooh, yeah. ooh, 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 look at that. Narada Michael Walden, Gratitude Sky Music. <gasps> Beautiful. Beautiful. We're so happy because. This with this was a this was a this was a smash for Chris Brown, that was a smash for Shawnee Wilson. I love your smile, and Chris Brown loved that song. Took that song, I love your smile, and made undecided, and undecided was been, has been played so much because people love I love your smile, and they love what he did with it. And it's a smash mm -hmm. all over again. So we're very very happy this time. We congratulate Shawnee Wilson. We adore who we want to make more smashes with. We congratulate Chris Brown and his production team as well. We want to make more smashes with them, and we want to keep music going. We're yeah. very happy this time to receive this award from ASCAP, who's been a, a partner of ours, a friend of ours, and I, I've got lots of ASCAP awards. I was asked ASCAP Songwriter of the Year many years ago, and here I am again celebrating this beautiful award. So God bless us all. Love you, love you, love you. Congratulations! <laughs> all right. Woo! I saw Bay Area King Nardamart. Michael Walden. They don't call him King Narda for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know you don't have a lot of time to be with us, but I want to talk about the new um, Santana uh, Quarantine Blue. Oh. you want to introduce that while I cue it up? Uh, John McLaughlin, who discovered me, got a hold of me and said that musicians right now are hurting all over the world. So he had an idea for a song called The Quarantine Blues. Uh, and he sent it to me, and then I sent it to Cindy Santana, Carlos Santana, Rob Armstrong in Detroit, and we all kind of put our, our energy on it and blew it up, you know, filmed ourselves in different locations. Carlos and Cindy were in Hawaii quarantined. I was quarantined here in my studio. Ralph was in Detroit. Mahavishnu John was in Monaco. So then we had Joel Anthony Margolis and Jim Wright, my engineer, compile all the parts, put it all together, and uh, it's raising money on Facebooks, on Instagrams, on all the social medias for musicians who will uh, need the help from Music Cares. All right, let's check yeah. it out. Okay. You know what to do. Summer is at all you can look on your team. 
You know what to do. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Bob wow, is new. Yeah. Follow Santana. Love you, Roz. Love you, Roz. Love you. That was amazing. Love you, Roz. <laughs> Love you too. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. That came out of quarantine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. That was creative. I mean, the beat. I was feeling all of that. Woo! <laughs> So Narda, um, if people want to reach you, I mean, the best way is is Tarpon Studio. Well, uh, what's the best way to reach me, Jimmy Jan? What's the best way to, way to reach me? Uh, at Tarpan Studios. What at Tarpan Studios? Uh, Narda at Tarpan Studios. Narda at tarpanstudios.com. There you go. Okay, I'm told Narda at tarpanstudios.com. N A R A D A at Tarpan, that's T A R P A N studios.com. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great. And um, what's next for Narda? I mean, you're are you going to tour when this is all over? I know you're you started with uh, Journey, you've been Sting's drummer. You so you're back and forth between producing and actually on the road. Well, we will go on the road whatever when it, and whenever that's meant to be for next year or whenever it com, calms down but really i'm happy to just be able to be home to raise my children be close by and make yes. sure everything's okay at this time and almost like a blessing from god that we slow down 
and that we handle our, 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 our home issues, our heart issues, take better care of ourselves. You know, we're washing our hands, we're washing doorknobs, we're washing things, and we're going to wash our emotions pure of racism. Let's look at each other with new mm-hmm. eyes. Let's be, let's be cool. Let we can say, hey, this is a good time that we get rid of anything that's not loving. Yes. Let's find a new way to be like embracing each other yes. in America so that we are truly a wonderful country that embraces itself, not fight mm-hmm. itself, but loves mm-hmm. itself. So I'm looking at this on the positive. It's half full. How we can make it more full with more love, more God mm-hmm. love, which is always the way. And this is my, my mission on the earth, to bring music, to inspire love, and help bring us together as people. Wow. But I know you got one more song, and um, we, want, we, want, we want to definitely want to hear this. And I get the name mixed up, but it's We. Oh, this is a new smash for Cindy, Cindy Blackman Santana, Carlos's wife, putting on her brand new smashes yesterday. Yes. Just yesterday. So it's hot. It's, it's hot. called... You got it going on. It's for all the women in the world, like you, Roz. You got it going on. My wife, all the ladies in the world got it going on. And it's now time that we salute and hold high women. Yeah. You got it going on. Without you, we we don't, we, we ain't really here. So we yeah. have to really kind of like look up to women and, and give more love and support. <laughs> So just till dawn, she's partying at home. Knows just what to do. She's clean, she mean, a dancing machine. She floats into a groove. She got it going on. She got it going on. She got it going on. Nothing can change her mood. She's style and dressed. She won't take a list. Queen of the saints, she's smooth. She got it going on. She got it going on. And her mind is strong. She got it going on. Go to the place I can make her care. Yeah, that's my friend. 
Make somebody happy here in the studio. This is Jimmy's pet. This is Jimmy's pet here. <laughs> All right. What a show. 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 You had to be there. You had to be there. <laughs> I am so honored to um, that you would take the time from your busy schedule to sit with me. Um, as I tell everybody, I'm not a talk show host, um, but quarantine and have you doing things you never thought you'd do. Yes. <laughs> you know, you got to shift. You got to yes. shift. You know, we can't get out and travel, um, but I did not want to be disconnected from the artists that I love, your work. And things like that. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for taking the time. And I'm gonna let you close it out. <laughs> Roz, we love you. And what you said was really uh, important because you say we have to shift. It is time for a shift. Uh, many of us are in the quarantine. We're trying our very best to be more mindful of, you know, taking time uh, uh, in isolation of not getting out too much. And if we do get out, to wear our mask and to be smart so we can live. And we're saying prayers. It's a very a prayerful time that we're taking care of the world, thinking about the world, you know, for our lives and for our, 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 our futures. And the shift that we're talking about also is to be flexible, to survive. In a studio, those who, who want to make a hit have to be flexible. And that makes a shift. I'm shifting myself to be flexible for the new blessing to come for a new hit song. So in your life, you're saying I'm shifting to now take advantage of this downtime, the quarantine, and make a little TV show here. So we can talk to Nara and my different sax players and my, my friends and get the wisdom and the, and the knowledge out there. So this shift, shift you're talking about, it's really important for all of us. So I'm making a prayer that we all can make a, a shift toward love, a shift toward enlightenment, a shift toward gratitude, a shift toward being happy to be alive. If you woke up this morning, if your eyes opened up, celebrate. All right now. All right All now. Right now. You said it right there. All right now. Grateful, All grateful right. for where we are and we right. made it and we're yeah. here today. That's right. So I, I want to go out with um, We Can Live Forever. Okay. I'm going to let you play the hit it on it. Yeah. Here we go. Go, Narda. Thank you. <laughs> We can live forever. We can live forever. We can live forever. We can live forever. Oh, yeah. We can live forever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, Love you, Roz. Love to you and prayers for your husband's good health, long life. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. And thank you all for tuning in to episode number eight. Yay, we did it. We did it. Um, we'll be back next week. Stay tuned and God bless you. And what an artist say, wear your mask, be grateful, mm -hmm. be thankful. Mm -hmm. We love you.